to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, the Bible says, There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For Christians, there is a reward for our service to God. What is that reward? What is that service? And how can we make sure that we don't miss out on that? We're so glad you've joined us. For our study today, we want to encourage you, if you don't have your Bible, locate it. Let's get our Bible and make sure you've got it as we're going to look to the Word of God to learn more about the Christian's reward for service. Today's broadcast is brought to you by congregations of the Church of Christ and individual Christians who would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly in your local area. On Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday, you would be an honored guest at any of their Bible study opportunities. And so we want to encourage you to visit the Lord's Church in your area. You'll find people there who'd be happy to sit down and discuss the Word of God with you. If you've got a Bible question, or you want to know more about the plan of salvation, or the church, or, or whatever matter there may be biblically, We'd be happy, they'd be happy to talk with you about that matter, to simply sit down, open up the Bible, and hear what God has to say on the subject. At the Gospel of Christ, we also want to help you in your journey to know more about God and His Word. Won't you check us out on the web? TheGospelOfChrist.com is our website. From there, you can access all our material. We have audio CDs, DVD, video on DVD, uh, digital downloads that you can acquire. If you need written material, study questions, articles, just a whole good library of Bible study material, and it's all available to you free of charge. If you'd like to have a copy of this lesson or any of our lessons, log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can fill out a media request form. We'll be glad to send that to you if that's what you need in the mail. We'll even cover the postage on getting that there. Check us out on social media as well as the Gospel of Christ app available in the respective play stores also. Today we're thinking about reward for the service that is given. And friend, we want to be sure today as we think about this idea, let's understand that being a Christian does require diligent work and service to God. John 9 verse 4, Jesus said, We must work the works of Him who sent us while it is day. There is indeed work to be done. As a Christian, I have a labor of love. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3, we are to be busy about the work of the Lord. James chapter 1 verse 25 and of two of the congregations in the book of Revelation. Revelation 2 verse 2, Revelation 2 verse 19, Jesus said, I know your works. He commended them by saying, you are working hard in my kingdom. And that's what we ought to do. Just like Jesus who came not to be served, but to serve, Mark 10 verse 45, we want to consider our bodies and our lives belonging to God and we want to give ourselves to Him in service every day. And friend, as you do work in the kingdom of God, please understand there is a great blessing and a great reward for working for God. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. One day the work will be over. One day the struggle will be ended. One day we'll cross the finish line. And we have the reward of that eternal rest. 1 John 2 verse 25. John said, This is the promise He's promised us. Eternal life. There remains a rest 
for the people of God. Hebrews 4 verse 9. What we mean by that is Jesus is able to save completely those who come to God through Him. We have a heavenly home that awaits us with Almighty God. You see, even death, even death can't subdue our reward. All are in the grave will one day come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life. Jesus indeed will come back to claim His own, and the righteous will go away into eternal life. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18, Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. But friend, please understand this. There is no reward for the child of God. There is no reward without service. And where there is faithful service, there is an assurance of our reward. I want you to think about 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10, and what the Apostle Paul here says. We'll, we must all give an account of the things done in the body, whether good or evil. I'm going to have to be judged by what I do. But if I'm steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, friend, I have the assurance that one day I can live with God forever, that God will invite me into that heavenly home and there will be great rejoicing for the Christian, the child of God. And so there is a reward for our service. But let's first think about this idea. What service must I, as a Christian, what service must the Christian offer for which there is a great reward? First and foremost, and the main thing, we must give ourselves in service to God. What's the greatest service you could offer yourself? Romans 12 verse 2, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To turn your life around, to transform your actions, and your way of thinking. That's the greatest service you can offer to truly give yourself to Almighty God. Listen to 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. Paul says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? What do you mean I'm not my own? You are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are His. When I gave my life to God, friend, that included my body and my spirit, and the greatest service I can offer is to truly let God work in me and work through me to accomplish His will. This is why Jesus would say, we take up our cross daily and follow Him. Uh, Matthew chapter 16. This is why we are to be faithful unto death, and it is the love of Christ that compels us to live for Jesus each and every day. And so as we think about the service offered, friend, the greatest thing you could ever do is to give your life to God. Have you turned your life over to God? Have you really committed to letting God, are you really committed to letting God work through you, in you, by His Word to accomplish His purposes, to seek and save the lost and to bring glory to Him? Secondly, as a Christian, one of the services we can offer is we must diligently give ourselves not only to God, but to God's Word. I want you to open your Bible to Job chapter 23, and I want you to see this passage that Job mentions. Job is a man of great suffering, but in this context, Job 23, 12, Job said, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. The body can't work without the proper nutrients, without the proper diet, without food and water, it just won't survive. Part of my service to God is I need that spiritual food brought into my life every day to give good service. Listen to Matthew 5 verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And do you remember what Jesus said? As Jesus is facing the temptation that Satan is setting before him, if you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. He'd been in the wilderness 40 days without food and water. He, he was hungry, no doubt. Jesus said this, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. The heart of the righteous studies. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 28, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Friend, part of my service means as it relates to studying God's Word, means that I need to check and make sure that what I'm doing is according to the Bible. Let me give you an example of that. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. The Bible says of the Bereans, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. Why? In that they received the Word with all readiness, listen, and searched the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. There needs to be a daily studying, searching, seeking to, to be more, to be closer to God and make sure that I'm living the way God wants me to live. Is there any word from the Lord? It was the great question asked in Jeremiah 37, 17. And the answer is a resounding yes. God's word. It's complete. 2 Timothy 3, 16. It is without error in every way. John 17, verse 17. And it is able to save our souls, James 1, verse 12 through 22, and make us pleasing in the sight of our God. Well, what other service can we offer to God that brings glory and honor to Him? Friends, we must faithfully follow the teaching of Jesus Christ to bring service to God. There's a lot of folks in our world who the idea of Jesus appeals to them, the idea of Christianity maybe even, but following Jesus fully and completely might be a whole different story. But that's exactly what it requires. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, It's not everybody that, that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. It isn't enough to say, I believe in God or I believe in Jesus or Jesus is my Lord. It's not everybody who does that that's going to heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. In Jesus' day, there were a lot of people who recognized his deity. There were a lot of people who saw his miracles that were undeniable. And yet to some of those same people, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? and do not do the things which I say. If you say I'm Lord, which means master, owner, one who's over all, wouldn't it make sense that you also need to obey me? Hebrews 5 verses 8 and 9, Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. For one who is just to hear the word, he's like a man that observes what he looks like in a mirror, then he walks away, immediately forgets what he looks like. James said, don't be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. So as Christians, to bring service to God, let's do what the Lord says. Let's follow His teaching. Another service that we can offer to Almighty God is we need to continue to be soul winners for Jesus, to try to reach people with the gospel of our precious Lord and Savior. That's what Jesus was all about. Luke 19, 10, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. And to His followers He said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel unto every creature, make disciples, of all nations. Matthew 28, 18, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. In fact, the proverb writer in the long ago said, he who wins souls is wise. Friend, I want to be a soul winner. I want to, I want to help people see how good it is to be a Christian, to be the type of example that ought to be to others. Think about Matthew chapter 5 and the power of example. Verses 13 through 16, Jesus said, you can be like a city that is set on a hill that people can see for long distances. You can be that, that lamp that is lit and the whole house sees the light. And then he said these words, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We preach Jesus 
warning every man, teaching every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. We want to do everything we can to help people learn about and see what God's love is. Now, with that idea in mind of some of the things we can do to offer service to God, what reward will the Christian be given for that service? Well, friend, there are benefits here and now. There are benefits immediately to living the Christian life, and it's this. You're living the best, most peaceful, rewarding life possible right now. John 10, verse 10, I came that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly, both now and in eternity. You're living the best life. We have all things that have been given to us for life and godliness through God's knowledge. 2 Peter 1, verse 3, we are avoiding. Look, by being a Christian, you have avoided so many problems. Abstain from every form of evil. Think about all the evil that you have abstained from by being a child of God. You're not, you're not down at the... Uh, you're not down at the club or the bar or the, wherever it may be getting caught up in all kind of moral and social. No. Christians, you're living the best life. Part of the reward is, reward is right now, you're living the best life that is possible in this life. Jesus is the life. John 14, 6, and if you're in Him, you're living the life. Secondly, one of the rewards that we also receive is the joy and peace that we have as a Christian right now. As a child of God, you have a sense of joy that transcends circumstances and isn't based on what others do or don't do. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. When Jesus came into the earth, uh, the uh, angels said, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. We have that goodwill. We have that joy and that peace in the Lord. Is any of you, is any man happy? Let him sing psalms, James would say. Paul and Silas were in prison in a deep, dark dungeon in Philippi, and they were praying, and they were singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Paul would say, seeing then that you're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily ensnare us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finish for our faith, listen now, who for the joy set before Him endured the cross. It's not dependent on circumstances. It's independent of those because we are in Christ and we have that joy. We can even find joy in the trials that we face in this life. And so, my friend, you will never, part of the reward is, you will never have more joy, more peace, more tranquility and serenity than you would in any other life. Jesus brings those into our life as we live every day for Him. Probably one of the rewards that means the most to us is our great victory over death. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Paul says in verses 55 through 57, O oh, death, where is your sting? The strength of sin is law. And he goes on to talk about how that death was for the longest time what brought people great problems. But through the resurrection, Paul says, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Victory over what? Death. Victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Part of the reward as a child of God is death will not defeat us. Death is not the end. Death is something that takes us into the presence of God. Our death is blessed in the Lord. Revelation 14, verse 13, all who are in the grave are one day going to come forth for the Christian, those who have done good to the resurrection of eternal life. Maybe you've been in this life, maybe you've dealt with difficulty. Please understand that death, the death of a child of God is not the worst thing that could ever happen. Also, part of our reward is the eternal bliss we have in heaven. Christians have been promised a wonderful place in heaven with God, 
where Jesus is, John 14, 6, where saints of old are, 1 Samuel chapter 12, our loved ones who've died in Christ are, 1 Samuel 12, verse 21, where there is happiness and joy around the throne of God, Revelation 4 and 5, and where we don't face the difficulties and troubles that we do now. When you think about heaven, you know, when I was younger and I thought a lot about heaven, I used to think, about the streets of gold, the pearly gates, the diamonds, the jasper, all the, all the physical things that might appeal to you. But the more I think about heaven, that's not what makes it great. Here's what makes heaven great. It's a very simple statement and a probably verse that we might not have thought about this way before. Matthew 6, 9, Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven. What makes heaven great? Streets of gold? Walls of jasper and diamond, God's there. Our Father who art in heaven. What's the great reward you have? You'll be with the God of the ages for all eternity, the ancient of days. You'll never be separated from Him. You'll be in His presence and His closeness forever. Now, with these ideas in mind, let's consider what can I do as a Christian to make sure that I don't lose that reward? How can I make sure that the reward for my service is something that I actually receive? Well, you begin by understanding that even though you may have worked in service for the Lord for many years, there is the potential that you can lose it. Now, friend, we don't say that to be negative. We don't say that to scare you, but we say that for this reason. Don't stop working. You can lose that reward even though God doesn't want you to and we don't want you to. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12, Paul said, Take heed lest ye fall. Revelation 3, 4, and 5, Some were in jeopardy of having their names written out of the book of life. Acts 8 verse 22, Paul said, Your money to Simon, your money perish with you. And in Galatians chapter 5 verse 4, Paul said to Christians, Some had fallen from grace. Let's realize that that the possibility exists, therefore, I've got to keep fighting. I've got to keep wording, working. I've got to keep bringing service to God. There's never a point where I can lay down and give up and say it's all. No, until my very last breath, I want to do what I can to please God and to serve Him in each and every way. And then remember, we can't get the retirement mentality. That is, I've done my part. I've gotten a little aged maybe and it's time to let somebody else step in and take over and I can just retire as a Christian. No, again, we're to be faithful unto death. We're to take up our cross every day. Uh, Revelation 2 verse 10, Luke chapter 9 verse 23, the kingdom is a vineyard and a vineyard is a place of work where fruit is produced, Matthew chapter 20. And remember, we're to be steadfast, immovable. Here's the key. Always, not till you reach 65, 67, always abounding in the work of the Lord. There is no retirement age. I understand your physical limitations may be more, uh, whatever that may be. I understand that, and God does as well, I'm sure. But I can't ever lay down and quit as a child of God. And then remember this, my friend. What you do for God, what you do for His kingdom, the service you offer to the Lord Jesus Christ, that's something that really matters in this life. Our labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. If I'm trying to be the best Christian I can and be a good example, you never know the impact that has on other people. If you're trying to walk in the light every day, who knows how that light is going to shine in people's lives that may be filled with darkness. If I'm trying to be happy and rejoice and worship God to the best of my ability to spread the gospel and do good, friend, there's so much good that can be done from that and your work is not in vain in the Lord. And so today, we bring things to a climax by thinking about our reward for service. Do you have that reward? Are you a child of God? The great question was asked in Acts chapter 16, verse 30. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Have you been saved? Are you a Christian? Have you submitted your life to the will of God? You say, well, what do you mean? Am I, have I obeyed the gospel? 
Do you believe Jesus is God's Son? Hebrews 11:6 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That faith comes by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Do you believe God in His Word and do you believe in Jesus? Are you willing to make a change in your life? The Thessalonians, they turn from idols to God to serve the true and living God. Will you turn from sin and turn to God to serve Him, bring Him service in this life? Will you repent? Would you confess that Jesus truly is the Savior of the world? The, the Ethiopian eunuch said it, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And would you, to have every sin washed away and to get in Christ, would you be immersed in water? Paul said in Galatians 3 verse 27, As many of us as were baptized into Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. Have you been baptized into Christ where salvation is? 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. Maybe you have, but you haven't continued to walk that life. Maybe your service has not been what it should. And make a change in your life. Come back to where you need to be and make sure that you get right with God before it is everlastingly too late. Friend, we want you to know today that God loves you immensely. The Bible says, cast all your care upon Him. He cares for you. The God of heaven cares deeply for you. He wants all men to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 4, He doesn't want anybody to be lost. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. We also, we love you. We want you to go to heaven. We want you to know that our motivation and our aim is simply to help people see and turn to God so that one day they can live with Him for all eternity. And so we love you and God loves you. If you need to make changes in your life, whatever those may be, we encourage you to visit the local congregation of the Church of Christ in your area. If we can help you as well here at the Gospel of Christ, don't hesitate to contact us and please join us next time as we study more from the Word of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.